We're focusing on what we believe are the top five compact crossovers in the marketplace. Compact crossover is the largest section of the auto industry. We get more questions about these than anything else, right? Do we ever. And we are going to count them down from five to our number one pick. But keep in mind, this is different than our top 10 that we just released. Those were new vehicles that we reviewed in 2021. These are our favorite crossovers overall. This video is brought to you by Canada Drives. Shop online for your next used vehicle and enjoy the convenience of two-year door delivery and the confidence of a seven-day love it or return it guarantee. Visit canadadrives.ca to learn more. Coming in at number five is the Ford Escape. Every single time we drive this vehicle, we're impressed by what Ford has done. Yeah. It looks good, it drives well, and it has a lot of available powertrains, which is why it got on this list. Well, that's the impressive part. I didn't realize that Ford actually came out with the Escape Hybrid in 2004. Ford's been ahead of the game. There's two gas versions, one being very powerful. You've got the hybrid, and the PHEV. Now the only downfall of the PHEV, which we just reviewed, is it only comes with a front wheel drive option. Not to say that that's not going to work for some people, it will. But you look at the price, that's one of the best things about it is they're selling that PHEV for a lot less than everybody else. Plus it has killer range because it is front wheel drive. So let's run through the specs and tell you all about it. The two gas engines include a 1.5 liter EcoBoost engine with 180 horsepower, a two liter EcoBoost with 250 horsepower, a hybrid with a combined 200 horsepower, and a plug-in hybrid with 221 horsepower, 60 kilometers, 37 miles of EV range. All Escape models come with available all-wheel drive except for the PHEV that we mentioned. J.D. Power has not rated the 2022 Escape, but the 2020 version has a quality and reliability score of 72 out of 100. Car Edge states the Escape will retain 47% of its value after five years. It's not the RAV4 hybrid that has the best fuel economy. It's the Escape hybrid at 5.9 liters per 100 kilometers combined. 40 miles per gallon. Actually, a couple of years ago, Andrea and I did a, a, a full driving comparison where we drove them on the exact same route. Yeah. And we confirmed that the Escape does get better fuel economy than the RAV4 hybrid. So if you're looking for a low entry to get into a fuel efficient vehicle, that might be the one to look at. And you know what else? Ford makes the most comfortable seats. When we did that long drive, we were in bumper to bumper traffic. It was quite the day. We both said to each other, oh my gosh, I wanna go in the Escape. The seats are so comfortable. And then the plug-in range is really quite impressive. So the Prime from the Toyota is really quite good at 68 miles of pure EV range, but this one's pretty damn good. Yes. Here's the pricing for the Ford Escape. The base gasoline model starts at just under $29,000. If you want the high performance two liter EcoBoost engine, that's just under $40,000. So the base model hybrid starts because it does have a front wheel drive option, just under $33,000. And the all wheel drive is $34,500. So, and the Ford Escape plug-in, just front wheel drive as we mentioned, is just under $38,000, a lot of value. The cabin, the quietness, everything is top notch. Yeah. The downfall with the Escape is it looks a little bit stark, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It's, it's not the best looking interior. There is quite a bit of hard plastic. I mean, we do see that in Ford products. I would actually like to see the Bronco Sport with all of these powertrains as well. Our number four pick is the Subaru Forester, and there's a refresh for 2022. If you want a vehicle that has the easiest use, getting in and out, loading kids in and out, loading things in the back, outward visibility. We get a lot of emails from people and comments, people saying, I want a vehicle with really good outward visibility. Yeah. There is no vehicle on the road that can beat the Forester for that. Huge doors, great cargo access. It's very functional. Yeah, I really like it. Every time I get into it, most of the uh, vehicles that we review are the top trim, and this comes with the panoramic sunroof, and it's just so open and bright. I really like it. It's like you're in a big fishbowl, actually. And then the other thing we actually are driving the Forester this week yeah. and uh, Andrea and I both noticed 
the materials on the inside of the Forester, I would say, are at the top of the class. Everything yeah. is soft touch points and it really feels and looks good. It has this beautiful color combination with a saddle brown. And like Zach said, a lot of soft materials. Another thing I love about the Forester is that it has a lot of space. It's versatile and functional. If you have a dog, I mean, there's a lot of dog walkers who love the Forester because there is so much cargo capacity. All right, so it's only available with one engine. Mm -hmm. They ditched the turbo a couple of years ago, which was really disappointing. They also ditched the manual transmission. People don't buy manuals. Uh, so they have one engine and getting back in it this week, I was really quite nicely surprised surprised yeah. by um, the way that their continuously variable transmission runs. There is a new model. We're going to tell you about that in a second. Let's go into the stats. The Forester has a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine matched with a CVT, 182 horsepower and 176 pound feet of torque. JD Power gives the 2021 Forester a quality and reliability score of 81 out of 100. Car Edge states the Forester will retain 59% of its value after five years. Now those are impressive numbers. Not only is the quality and reliability score excellent, but it's that resale value. And I've had followers contact me who have sold their Subaru and say, I got a lot of my money back. Then you add in the all-wheel drive system. They have a fantastic all-wheel drive system and new for 2022 is the Wilderness yeah. Edition. It has a slightly different programming um, and gear ratio for the continuously variable transmission. It's lifted just a little bit. Yeah. It has a little bit more rugged cladding. It's a slightly more off-road version of an already capable vehicle looks not sold on it i don't know if i'm totally on board with the way it looks but it's out there yeah i like the new look of this forester this refresh gave it a bolder grill i think it looks even boxier i like the design and what they've done to it it starts at just under $29,000 and the top premier trim in Canada is just over $40,000. I can't believe the value in it. Now, some people complain that it has a CVT and yes, you can hear the engine matched with a CVT in this Forester, but it's a pretty good one. They do one of the best in the business, absolutely. Yeah. I think Honda does a good CVT and so does Subaru. So give it a shot. You'll be surprised by how much you like it. At number three, Mazda Fangirl over here, it wasn't hard to put it on the list because we both agree, is the CX-5. Oh my gosh, two engine options, the 2.5 liter four cylinder, and of course the turbo charge that I just absolutely love. The CX-5 to me is a real standout in this category, especially that beautiful interior. Now, one of the reasons why it's not higher on the list, it's stuck in the middle at number three, is it only has two gasoline variants. Yeah. If they had a hybrid or a plug-in as an option, it probably would bubble up to the, maybe even the top spot. Yeah. But it isn't in there because of that. So we'll have to wait and see what they decide to do. There is the new um, CX-50 that's yeah. coming out uh, next year, and we'll see if they're gonna do a hybrid. Uh, some people know Know that Toyota and uh, Mazda have a relationship. We'll see if they get something from the Toyota side. The CX-5 base engine is a 2.5 liter four cylinder with a six speed automatic transmission, 187 horsepower and 186 pound feet of torque. Mazda takes the same 2.5 liter and turbocharges it and it's matched to a six speed automatic. 250 horsepower and 320 pound-feet of torque using premium gas. If you use regular gas, it drops to 227 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque. The two base trims are available with front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive. All the other trims come with all-wheel drive. JD Power gives the 2021 Mazda CX-5 a quality and reliability score of 81 out of 100. Carage states the CX-5 will retain 55% of its value after five years. There's some real standout features with this vehicle. Yeah. It looks great. It's got a beautiful interior and it really drives well. And so when you add all that together, it's a compelling package. It is. There are a few complaints about this CX-5 that it doesn't offer a panoramic sunroof. Zach doesn't care. And it also doesn't have a touch screen option. You have to control the screen at the center console dial. Now, yeah. one good thing is that the 2021.5 
they call it in Canada, now comes with the 10 and a quarter inch screen, something that the US got in their 2021 model. I, I love the dial and I love the volume knob there. I don't yeah. have to get fingerprints on the screen. Trust me, it's really easy to use. And now it's got the bigger screen. The only thing is for some people is the panel roof, as Andrew mentioned, I don't really care. But overall, yeah. this is one hell of a product. Yeah, I mean, it really does blend into the luxury category. Mazda's done such a great job. I know why I'm a fan. The price starts at what, Andrea? The base front wheel drive model starts at just over $29,000 and the base all wheel drive is $30,700. You can get the GT model with the base engine or you can move up to that turbo engine for $40,750 and that top signature trim is just under $43,000. Our number two vehicle is the Hyundai Tucson. Now, wait, 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 wait. People are probably <laughs> saying, but didn't you just do a top 10 of 2021? Yeah. And the Tucson was your number one pick. Ah, but we're playing with different rules here. Yeah. That was our number one car of 2021. It, however, our number two choice in this compact crossover category. Yeah, and I think that, well, we'll explain it more, I think, once we get to our number one pick, and it will really make sense. But it's number two, which is a great spot to be in. I'm so impressed with Hyundai with this Tucson. First off, they didn't just release a new gas model, but they released a hybrid and a PHEV like that. Yeah. And a lot of car companies, they really trickle them out over years. Well, when's the plug-in coming? Well, it's coming, you know, in, in the yeah. Never Never Land. They decided to bring them all out at the same time. It's a cool looking vehicle with yeah. the unique front grille and the way the LED uh, daytime running lights are integrated in there. Plus on size, this thing is killer. Yeah, it's got a lot of space, whether you're in the front, second row or cargo capacity. It feels wide and open. I love the new infotainment system. It offers plenty of storage and that center console is well organized. Now, it doesn't have the buttons and the knobs that I know you like, Zach. Yeah, but you, if you don't get the top trim, this is in the gas version, you go with the smaller rating screen, you actually get a volume control on yeah. the screen. When you go to the bigger screen to make it look that real clean flat panel, they moved everything into the touch screen. You have to decide whether you like that. Overall, as a package, Package, though uh, you can pick your weapon if you want a straight gas and you want to keep it cheap you yeah. can do that if you want to get the hybrid spend more money and save some at the pumps or if you want to be leading edge you can get the plug-in and and killer range right well let's get into the specs Zach and we'll go through it all the base gas model has a 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine with an eight-speed automatic transmission with 187 horsepower the hybrid uses a 1.6 liter turbo four-cylinder and a six-speed automatic plus the electric motor for a total output of 226 horsepower and standard all-wheel drive. The plug-in hybrid has the same engine as the hybrid, but a larger 13.8 kilowatt hour battery pack and more power, a combined 261 horsepower. It has 53 kilometers, 33 miles of EV range with standard all-wheel drive. JD Power gives the 2021 Tucson a quality and reliability score. Impressive here, 88 out of 100. Car Edge states the Tucson will retain 55% of its value after five years. Now, some comments I get is, well, Hyundai is new to this, to the hybrid and the PHEV, but look at that impressive JD Power score, 88 out of 100. That's yep. amazing. And that's one of the reasons why this product, and it won our car of the year for 2021, but it didn't win this category, it came in second, because it is new. It's yeah. new technology. Uh, the winner is proven uh, undeniably. Well, don't give it away. Well, I'm not giving it away. I'm like sure a lot is. of people are guessing what it is already. But that's the one thing is the, the winner is definitely proven. This is new technology. We'll have to wait and see how it does in the long run. You're right. The quality score is good. Uh, lots of different engines and fuel economy and yeah. prices. So let's talk about that. The Tucson Hybrid gets great fuel economy. It's 6.3 liters per 100 kilometers in the city and 6.6 .6 on the highway. That's 37 miles per gallon city, 36 miles per gallon highway. 
If you get the plug-in, it gets a combined city and highway equivalent of 2.9 liters per 100 kilometers. That works out to an equivalent of 80 miles per gallon. When it's depleted, it drops down to 6.3 liters per 100 kilometers in the city and 6.6 .6 on the highway. 37 miles per gallon city and 36 on the highway. The base all-wheel drive model starts at just under $30,000 and the base hybrid is just under $39,000. That ultimate top trim is $41,500. And the PHEV starts at $43,500. The top trim is just over $46,000. If you don't like this, they have the Santa Fe with <laughs> all the same stuff. And uh, it's quite incredible. So they've got two vehicles with similar powertrains. There is one difference though. The Santa Fe has the 2.5 liter, that gas engine, yeah. but also turbocharged. Now that is a lot of fun to drive. It's not available in this uh, Tucson. No. And our number one top pick, the Toyota RAV4. Good old faithful, right? Yes. Uh, the thing is, the Toyota has... Are you surprised? No, not really, because it has so much going for it. Um, it's just so well made. Yeah. Um, it has amazing resale value. It has a, a long history. It's the best seller in North America in the compact crossover space. And you know what? Toyota has earned it. Oh, they have earned it. You know, this RAV4 came out in 1989 as a concept car at the Tokyo Motor Show, and they released it in North America in 1996. And that was at a time where mostly body on frame SUVs were known that were a bit utilitarian. They weren't great on fuel economy, and they drove a little bit rough. And Toyota comes out with this RAV4. I remember it. And we should also say Honda came out with the CRV True. around the same time. True. So that was then. This is now. The one that we have available in the dealerships came out in 2019. They came with a new platform, um, upgraded engine and transmission, yeah. and uh, a really overall better looking package. So the reason why, not only because it has such great resale value and so durable, but they also have lots of different engine options. So yeah. let's get into it. The RAV4 offers three powertrains, a gas model with a 2.5 5-liter four-cylinder engine matched with an eight-speed automatic transmission, 203 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque. Both front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive options are available. My favorite is the hybrid. It has an ECVT and a combined 219 horsepower and standard all-wheel drive. The plug-in hybrid, the Prime, matched with an ECVT, a combined 302 horsepower and 68 kilometers, 42 miles of EV range. There's no JD Power rating for the 2022 RAV4, but the 2020 model gets a quality and reliability score of 74 out of 100. CarEdge states the RAV4 will retain 60% of its value after five years. Now, I did mention it in there. I think my favorite is the RAV4 Hybrid, and I recommend it all the time yeah. to people who want to have a functional vehicle. So you get a RAV4, it's got all the same functionality, and the barrier to get into an electrified car um, to have the hybrid system is really low. It's $33,000, yeah. and it comes standard with all-wheel drive, and that's what most people can afford. Absolutely. So if you can't afford a pure electric vehicle, you've got this great option. We've actually got a couple friends who know people who just went and purchased the hybrid RAV4 because it's priced so well and it gets amazing fuel economy. Six liters per hundred kilometers combined and 40 miles per gallon. So I like that because it's a fairly low barrier to entry. You know, you can get a RAV4 hybrid and you're saving money at the pumps. It's not much more than the regular gasoline version. Yeah. Then there's the Unicorn, which is the PHEV. And we call it the Unicorn because we're hearing stories from people saying they're on a two or three year waiting list to get one. Mm -hmm. So the plug-in version, the demand is so high and the capacity to deliver them is so low, yeah. the, the RAV4 hybrid really is the one to get. And the RAV4 Prime gets the full federal rebate of $5,000 because it has an 18.8 .8 kilowatt hour battery. You have to have a vehicle with a 15 kilowatt hour battery or more to qualify. Something like the Tucson PHEV has a smaller battery and qualifies for $2,500 of the federal rebate. But good luck getting one. Now, the other thing I want to point out with the RAV4 Prime is that top trim, it gets 
pricey. Yes. And it does not come with a height adjustment on the passenger side, which is a bit of a pet peeve for me. The Tucson PHEV, you know what, Zach? There's amazing value yeah. there. The Tucson PHEV is better value. Yeah. There's no question about it. Actually, let's get into the numbers. What do these things cost? The base model front wheel drive model starts at just under $29,000. And that first all wheel drive model is just under $31,000. The hybrid all-wheel drive is just over $33,000 and the prime all-wheel drive is just under $45,000. That top trim is just under $57,000. So the reason why there's so much demand for the plug-in hybrid version is it does have the best EV range yeah. at 68 kilometers. But you just referenced there, Andrea, the top trim of that prime is $56,000. Yeah. You know, we are just talking recently about full EVs that are all wheel drive that are the same price. So should you get a Toyota plug-in or get a, just a full battery electric for the same price? I know, and you look at that Ionic 5, that fully loaded top trim is just under $60,000. So are you gonna spend an extra three and get that one over the RAV4 Prime? I mean, definitely something to think about. Which brings me back to the RAV4 Hybrid. And I think it's one of the greatest products available on the road today. It does everything really, really well and you don't have to spend a ton of money to buy it. No. Now the one detriment to the uh, RAV4 is the interior is very industrial looking. Yeah. It's not luxurious in any way. There certainly is something Toyota could work on to make it. I mean, you look at that that Hyundai. Uh, the interior looks I pretty know. flashy, right? Yeah. And the good old Rav4 is a bit a bit lackluster. So uh, you have to weigh everything in balance, and on yeah. balance, it still is our top choice. Yeah, and I think when it comes to the interior, Toyota is saying, "Hey." these vehicles are popular. It doesn't matter what RAV4 you buy, consumers want them because of the quality and reliability and of course that amazing resale value that they're willing to give up some things to get it. All right, we're done. Thanks for watching our top five. If you're shopping for a compact crossover, these are all, there's no wrong answer with all of no. these. We just had to do five to one. We had to come up with some list, right? <laughs> all right, so if you want to follow along Andrea's Instagram to get comments on future yeah. videos, it's motormouth underscore Andrea. What else do they have to do? Well, you get to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and you'll be notified when all of our reviews drop. We put out a lot of content each week. This video is brought to you by Canada Drives. Shop online for your next used vehicle and enjoy the convenience of to-your-door delivery and the confidence of a seven-day love-it-or-return-it guarantee. Visit canadadrives.ca to learn more.